Flying with camera gear is one of the hardest things you can do, one of the most stressful things you can do. Trying to figure out what gear to take, how much you can take, what bags to pack them in, how to transport them, how to fly with them, what to take with you on the plane, what to check in. It's a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. I've been doing it for six, seven, eight years and I have finally cracked it. I finally figured out how I can fit everything I need when I travel for a shoot into these three bags right here. So let me show you how we do it. When you go for any shoot in an ideal situation, obviously, it, you know, it depends on what you're filming, but generally you want to be as prepared as possible. You want to have all your lighting gear with you. You want to have all your stands with you, all your C-stands. You want to have mics, backup mics, all your camera gear, everything possible you could possibly potentially need for a shoot, you want it with you. And when you're shooting locally, local to your city or state, it's much easier, of course. But when you're flying for a shoot, you have to try and find the right balance between what you can carry with you, you know, what's doable for you to physically carry and what you need. And finding that balance in such a perfect way has always been very, very difficult for me. But I think now I've cracked it. Before settling on the way I travel now with camera gear, I have transported gear multiple ways. What I used to do and what I still actually recommend is buying a golf club bag bags that I made for golf clubs you can get them for super cheap on Amazon $67 or you can get you know higher end ones that are hard case depending on what you're packing in there for $200 and up those are great for holding c-stands for holding light stands and tripods and usually you can kind of squeeze your softbox in there as well so that's a great bag to check in if you want a cheap a secure way to transport your lighting stands the biggest challenge obviously is also trying to pack your lights so what I used to do before was alongside this golf club bag check in a suitcase uh, within which I'd pack my clothes, which I need obviously my clothes and toiletries and stuff like that on one side and the other side I'd pack LED lights uh, and anything else I can kind of squeeze in there. Sometimes I pack my tripod into there and a few other bits and bobs that I might need for my shoot, for my cameras. And then I'd also have my camera case with me as a carry-on, which I still do now. Now the problem with this is I want you to imagine that you've got off your flight, you've gone to the baggage claim area, you've got your bags and now you are taking a 30 minute hike toward the rental car area. You might be taking a shuttle bus to the rental car area and you are somehow trying to drag a golf club bag, a wheel carry-on, a backpack, and also a check-in bag. So somehow you're trying to skillfully maneuver your hands in such a way where you can carry all this stuff with you. And unfortunately, more often than not, those luggage carts that you can get at the airports don't always securely, properly fit golf club bags and you know other similar bags of that size. I've been in situations where, you know, it's been difficult to get to elevators, the bag's fallen off. Or for example, you have to leave the car when you get on the shuttle or the train or whatever it is to get to the rental car area. And then you get off the train or the shuttle and you have to kind of, you know, maneuver your way with those bags. It's very difficult. It's very stressful. It's it's very tiring. You know, if it's a hot day and you're sweating, it's, it's not easy. So in trying to crack the right way where I can pack exactly what I need, which is sufficient for my shoot, no matter what shoot it is, while at the same time, you know, being able to bear the weight of what I'm carrying, I have settled on these three bags and I'll go through them with you one by one. The first one is my backpack. This backpack over here, I actually bought it uh, two, three years ago as a way to transport camera equipment. But as I said before on this channel, I've decided that I do not want that much weight on my back. I do not want cameras on my back. So I invested in a camera case bag, which has wheels, which I can drag around, makes my life easier. But I still had this lying around and I discovered through prolificating on just how to properly, you know, pack everything, that I can use this for an amazing purpose. And that purpose is to carry my clothes. Now, of course, it's not an easy fix. It depends, you know, where you're going and how long you're going for. But assuming the trip is short, I try to pack as light as I can, two pairs of jeans, two hoodies, maybe a few t-shirts. And this bag is phenomenal because you can fit all of that into here. It's very spacious. And of course, it's also a laptop bag. So I have my laptop here in the back, my laptop charger, my SSD drives, and a book to read as well on the, on the flight. And my headphones, of course, for those long journeys. And then I have my carry-on, which I've discussed before on this channel. I have another video, which is what's in my camera case. I'm sure you've seen it. If not, I'll put the link below. I'm gonna put this down because it's very awkwardly on my knee. This is the Manfrotto Pro Lid 55, I think it's called, something like that. I'll put the name over here. But I use it to carry my camera gear, my lenses, uh, batteries, and audio equipment, and everything kind of in between. Essentially, I'll have my Blackmagic 6K, 4K in there if it's, a, if it's a two camera shoot. I'll put my 24 to 70 in there. I'll squeeze in my 50 mm millimeter as a lens for my B cam. I'll have my VLOP battery solution in there. I'll have my quick release plate with the rails in there. Basically everything to do with the camera will be in this camera case. Anytime I'm going onto a flight, it stays with me. Never check it in. I, will never, I never check my cameras in. They go with me in the overhead bin. When I come off the plane, it's in my hand. And it's great because you know, when you're going for a shoot as well, it's very handy for a shoot as well. Everything you need is kind of in here. 
And then the main culprit, which is lighting and how to transport lighting. That is really where the stress kind of lies most of the time. I found this amazing bag. This is the Think Tank Production Manager 55. It's a massive bag and it's a very sturdy bag. This thing is a tank. It can survive anything. This thing, you throw off a cliff, you throw off a mountain, it can survive a nuclear bomb. Honestly, if, if, if a meteor hit the earth, this thing would still be around. It's that sturdy. And what's truly phenomenal about it is that it's not just built for light stands and tripods and such, but you can really fit an almost portable studio inside here. I could probably squeeze most of what I have in this bag. The issue is obviously it just becomes very heavy and you know the bag itself is very heavy without anything inside it. So I do try to find the balance between packing what I need inside there and, and it also not being too heavy, uh, not just for check-in, but also to carry around because even though it is very sturdy and it's got wheels and you can roll it around, if it's heavy, it still becomes quite a tire to carry it, especially if you have your heavy stuff toward the top of the bag, not the bottom, which is the lesson I learned recently and really badly hurt my arm. So what do I have inside here? I have two light stands, uh, one kind of more heavy duty one and one lighter one, uh, the heavy duty one, Duty one I use for my key light and the uh, lighter one I use for my backlight when I'm shooting for, uh, for interviews typically. These are newer light stands, but the reason I love them is they're very light compared to other light stands uh, and, and, and they're still very sturdy. They're light, but also sturdy. They're very heavy duty. I'll link them in the caption below. And then I packed my softbox, which is my secret weapon. It is my parabolic newer softbox. It is massive, truly massive. It's so big and it's phenomenal for interviews because it just gives a sense of nice, big, soft lighting that it's hard to come by. I diffuse the hell out of it. I have diffusion inside on the surface and that kg thingy diffusion as well and i just love it i love it it's, it's amazing for interviews especially when you have a strong light shining through it which is why i also pack i pack my gvm sd300d which really is you know a competitor of the aperture 300d i actually use them side by side i won't consider myself an expert so i'll be careful with my words but from what i can see the output the output is pretty much identical they're just phenomenal side by side having that lit on a subject coupled with the newer softbox that i have you get these wonderful results and i just love how it looks and then what i'll do is i'll also pack my aperture 200d which I'll use as a backlight. And the way I use that is I basically shoot at the ceiling behind the interview subject and have that light bounce down behind him, giving him a bit of rim light over here. Now, ideally I wanna have a softbox on there too, but again, trying to find the right balance between what I need and also what I can carry without being too much of a burden is, you know, quite a fine line. So I'll pack those two lights in there and then I'll also pack my tripods. I have two tripods, one Manfrotto tripod, heavy duty one, you know, for my A cam. And then I also have like a travel tripod, which I'm actually using now. It's not as sturdy as I want it to be, but try traveling with two heavy duty tripods, uh, packing that bag, it's not easy. So for this, I prefer the lightweight uh, travel tripod. And then what I'll also do is I'll pack my Sennheiser G3s in here. Ideally, 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 I would want my directional mic, which I'm using now, my Sennheiser MKE. I'd want that on a C-stand pointing at the subject, but trying to pack a C-stand as well into this bag, it's just too much weight. Uh, and, and again, it's not just about checking it in, it's also about transporting this bag everywhere you go. So what I do now is I have my Sennheiser G3s, the clip-on mics. The sound is, to be honest with you, phenomenal coming out of those mics, they're industry standard. I'll pack them as well in the bag and I'll use them for the interviews. But if I do need seat stands, what I'll do is I'll jump onto lensrentals.com and I'll rent what I need and any other gear, not just the seat stands, and have it shipped to the location that I'm shooting in. Lensrentals.com is a phenomenal website. I can't recommend it enough. Order what you need, you know, as long as you order it two, three days in advance, come straight away, wherever you need, wherever you need it. You can go pick it up at your local FedEx office or get it shipped directly to your hotel, even though FedEx office is probably a smart decision. Get there, you know, grab your equipment, grab your gear, take it to your shoot, and then when you're done, put it back in the box. Put the tape they give you back on with it, with the label they give you, and just drop it off at FedEx on your way home. And it's super easy and stress-free. Now there is so much more gear that I wish I could take with me, you know, more C stands, more lighting stands, more lights, my sound blanket, for example, more diffusion, but it's not easy to, to grab all these bags with you, especially if you're a lone shooter. If you're in a group of a few people and you have multiple bags, then yeah, maybe. Again, it also depends on where you're going. A lot of this is for domestic flying within the US. And also, this is very important, when it comes to domestic flying, you want to check in bags like this and any other bags that are oversized, oversized either in weight or in dimensions which, which, which this is this is actually a bit too big for delta and usually they're overweight as well what you can do is check in these bags as a media bag now what is a media bag a media bag is basically you are coming and saying look i've got a special bag i work in the media and uh, i would like to request the media bag allowance when it comes to the allowance of a media bag check with your airline and what their rules are but with delta domestic at least you know i believe the weight is double what you get for a check-in bag the dimensions are you know 20 30 percent more than the limited dimensions of a normal check-in bag i think it's 82 inches no 120 inches total i'm not sure i'll leave it over here somewhere for delta anyway at least i don't know about the other airlines and you basically pay a 50 dollar flat rate 
to check in the bag usually it's 40 dollars for a check-in bag and you can check that bag in but you need a media badge and how do you get a media badge you ask well it's actually very simple all they're looking for and this sounds very nefarious but it's not all they're looking for is some sort of id to tell people you know that you work in the media you have to show a media card like this which i actually made myself i'm going to cover up my number because i don't want you to call me but yeah there you go very simple made it at home on photoshop my picture my name ahmed nuri sardar is my real name my passport name if you're interested to put a barcode on there my logo my uh, company name and there's this is literally what they want they just want some sort of id to show that you work in the media and that's that's what this is and it sounds more nefarious than it is but that's literally what they want they want id from your company or you know of whatever just showing that you work in the media so i made this on photoshop sent it to staples asked them to print it out and laminate it and there you go that's my media badge so whenever i travel i check in i just show them my media ID which is what they request when you want to check in a media bag and there you go you're good to go so I hope that was beneficial uh, again uh, this really depends on what you're filming and where you're traveling to and, and what you're trying to film you know I saw behind the scenes of the team of uh, planet earth and you know uh, they had just a uh, hundred uh, hard case bags that they were throwing around uh, when they were hopping from island to island um, so you know it depends again on what kind of project you're working on it depends on what kind of shoot you're going on but for a lone shooter someone like myself you know who's going traveling mostly for interviews and b-roll uh two camera setups with black magic pocket cinema cameras i feel like this is a great way to do it and i'll also say again when i'm filming locally you know what i take with me and the way i carry gear and equipment is completely different and hopefully i'll do a future video on that on how i pack camera gear when i'm filming locally or you know within driving distance space even if it's a long distance drive and i'm driving state to state um you know the way i pack is completely different uh, compared to when i fly so this is very specific to flying and yeah Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you benefited. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while. And I just kept procrastinating because I didn't want to take all this stuff out. But I hope you benefited. And if you did, I want you to like this video. And I want you to hit that subscribe button. Because I'm going to be posting more content like this every Monday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again. Take care.